Hey there, welcome to Tim Talks Cooking. I'm Tim, and today I'm making Keto Zucchini Pizza Crust. This is really such a great recipe. It's so nutritious. It's for pizza crust. It's very low cal. It's pretty low carb. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bunch of individual sized pizza crusts and put them in the freezer so that I can have pizza whenever I get a hankering for it. Just whip one of these out dress it up and stick it in the oven and before you could get a delivery pizza at your home you'll be eating your own delicious keto pizza while i'm showing you the recipe i'm also going to display on the screen the nutritional information about each ingredient as i go along and at the end we'll total up the macros for the whole recipe and per portion as i've done in my last several recipes i'm excited about this recipe so let's get started now here, what I've got set up is a big glass bowl underneath this, see right there. In that, I have a strainer, and inside the strainer, I put a nice, strong, clean cloth napkin. And in that, I've got our zucchini. This is six zucchinis that I've shredded up. And I've also added in about two teaspoons, maybe a tablespoon of kosher salt. You use whatever salt you like. And I mix it in with my hands like this. And I let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes and after that time you're going to see because what we want to do is eliminate the water from the zucchini here look there it's really pretty much started there's what's come out so far now there's a lot more water in there so we got to get that out and what we're going to do is just simply squeeze it out I'm going to gather up the sides of the napkin like this and make a little package there we're going to give it a twist and start squeezing the water you can see it's really a lot of water it comes it just shoots out of there look at that and this is believe it or not the most efficient and easiest way to remove the water from your shredded zucchini I tried several different ways now each one of them each zucchini contains at least four ounces that's a half a cup of water so you're gonna end up with quite a bit here as you'll see in just a moment you want to continue squeezing until you get as much of the water out as you can and you don't have to go crazy about it but here we go this is probably pretty much about it while we're doing this preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit that's 200 degrees centigrade I think we're just about done with that there we go put that off to the side but look at this look at all this water that came out this is 24 ounces that's three cups of water now here is what we have left it's the pulp of the zucchini it's still going to be sort of sticky and wet but as you can see there's no water accumulated in the bottom of the bowl and that's really pretty much what we want I'm going to start adding our ingredients to this starts off with three ounces that's 84 grams of shredded mozzarella cheese just dump it on in there as well as the same quantity of Parmesan cheese this grated cheapo American Parmesan cheese. I do not use Parmigiano Reggiano for this kind of recipe. Next, let's add in a little coconut flour that's going to soak up the excess liquid and give stability to our pizza crust. Six tablespoons here. If you're weighing it, it's 1.8 ounces or 52 grams. Some flavorings will be nice. These are optional. I add in a tablespoon of dried Italian herbs and a tablespoon of garlic powder. Next, a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And finally, two beaten eggs. These are large eggs, by the way. In they go. And now just mix it up. I start with a fork, but I move on to my hand pretty quickly there because it's a nice thick dough. It's Next, I'm going to flatten it out in the bottom of my bowl so I can divide it into eight easy, equal portions with my spatula. And I take each one of those, roll it into a ball just like this. And on a parchment lined baking sheet, I'm going to flatten them out just like this into individual pizza crust. I get about three onto each one of my baking sheets. I've got two portions left, as you see here. And these are ready to go in the oven at 400 degrees, 200 degrees Celsius for 10 to 15 minutes. 
here they are right after they've come out of the oven they've been in there for 15 minutes we're gonna let them cool on a wire rack for about 15 minutes before we touch them at all now here these are completely cooled off now you can turn them over and handle them as you can see here I'll pick one up as you can see it's pretty solid pretty stable and they're flexible they're a little delicate but there we go now did you know you can reuse your parchment paper up to three times so don't throw it away after the first use here I'm going to use mine to store the pizza crusts I've cut it into squares here I'm just going to use them to separate our crusts so they don't stick together it's the next day and I've just pulled my package of pizza crusts out of the freezer and they're just wonderful I actually made one yesterday I uh, put a pizza together and stuck it in there with them and just check it out first of all comes right out of there because it's on the parchment paper look at that nice hard frozen pizza huh? I'm gonna put it on a piece of parchment paper and put it in the oven at 400 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes and it's gonna be just delicious Remember that from before the keto diet when you could just grab a frozen pizza out of the freezer and stick it in the oven and there you've got lunch or dinner or whatever. Really good. Let's talk about macros before we go. For the entire recipe, what it comes down to is this. 1138 calories, 43.8 grams of net carbs, 72.4 grams of protein, and 68.1 grams of fat. Per portion, when you make eight pizza crusts, the way we did here, comes down to this, you won't believe it, 142 calories per portion. That's just nothing. You could build a really great, tasty, satisfying pizza on top of that. Trust me. Each one only has 5.5 grams of net carbs, 9 grams of protein, and 8.5 grams of fat. I really hope you try this recipe. I also hope that you will like the video, that you'll comment on it here below, that you'll share it on Facebook, and that you will subscribe to my channel. Helps my channel grow and helps you find my videos, especially if you click on that little notifications bell. Thanks so much for being with us here today at Tim Talks Cooking. See you next time.